Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited today because we are doing a really highly requested video all about pumping and breastfeeding and how I built up my freezer stash full of milk. I now have over 700 ounces of pumped milk in my freezer and it's really just the best feeling in the world. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys um, tips and some tricks that I have to build your supply and to really build that freezer stash if that is your goal. For those of you who are new here, my name is Abby and I have a two-year-old son named Weston and a one-month-old named Noah. With Weston, I breastfed him until he was one and we were able to donate over a thousand ounces of my pumped milk to a kid who really, really needed it and it was honestly the best feeling in the world. And I actually learned along the way with that some things that you should not do because I actually ended up hurting my supply and had to dig into my stash to supplement with until I could build my supply back up. So I have tricks that I learned from that experience and then I have more tricks that I've learned this time around with Noah. So I'm gonna tell you guys all of my secrets and yeah, if you're interested in seeing what I do to build a freezer stash, then just keep on watching. The first thing I wanna start off with is when you should start pumping. I would say start pumping day three. You're really producing the colostrum. Colostrum is like an orange milk that you produce early on when baby is just born. It's really good for them. It's got all sorts of nutrients that they really, really need at that time. And then once your milk comes in, you're gonna be producing your, like, your actual milk. I started pumping day three, and I actually was able to pump out some colostrum that I have in my freezer in case Noah gets sick or anything, then I will give him that because it's just so incredible. It's called liquid gold for a reason, and I plan on saving that until he needs it. I say start pumping day three because you want to regulate your supply in the beginning because in the beginning your body doesn't know how much milk it needs to make and so really milk is a supply and demand kind of thing so the more you pump or the more you nurse the more milk you're going to produce because you're telling your body that it needs more milk starting on day three if you start pumping you're going to feel engorged and on day three when i started pumping i felt incredibly engorged and i actually wasn't able to pump all of that milk out. It was just stuck in there for some reason. I could not pump it all out, but it's okay because you just keep pumping every two hours and eventually it'll all come out. You're gonna wanna feed baby every two hours. Now, two hours means if you feed your baby at two o'clock and he feeds until 2.15, then you're gonna wanna feed baby again at 4.15. When you're done feeding baby, then Attach your breasts to the pump and pump for 10 to 15, 20 minutes after every single feed. That's really gonna tell your body to produce even more milk than it did. And that's how you're really gonna build your supply. When you are nursing your baby, make sure that baby is latched properly. If you're not sure if baby is latched properly, then contact a lactation consultant and they will um, check out your latch and make sure that baby is latched on properly because if baby is not latched on properly, then that can also hurt your supply. One way to tell if baby is or is not latched on properly is if your nipples are hurting, if they're cracked, if they're bleeding. Your nipples should not hurt, they should not be cracked, they should not be bleeding, and those are all signs that baby is not latched on properly. So, and also, it should not hurt when baby is nursing. It's not painful in any way, and so if it is painful for you, then I would contact a lactation consultant and have them show you and your baby how to properly latch. Basically, you wanna make like a little sandwich with your boob. You wanna like pinch it down and push it into your baby's mouth. It's kind of hilarious to think about, but it's called a nipple sandwich, I'm pretty sure and you literally just shove it into their mouth. You wanna make sure that their mouth is fully around the nipple and like the areola. And so when they're sucking, like the nipple is in like the back, like it's touching the palate, like they're, the palate of their mouth. I don't know what it's called, <laughs> but I'm not a lactation consultant. So if you are having trouble with that, contact them because they can help you. I also recommend not introducing a bottle until baby is two weeks old. Some people will say 
introduce it right away because then the father can feed them and you can sleep. I would not do that just to be safe. I introduced the bottle with Weston when he was one week old and then with Noah I waited until he was two weeks old. I say the pacifiers are fine. Um, neither of my boys had nipple confusion and they latched onto the breast just as well as they did the bottle, just as well as they did the pacifier. If you really need a break from nursing and you want to give the baby a bottle, then just make sure that you pump during that feed because you don't want to tell your body that you don't need the milk for that feed anymore because that's gonna start to hurt your supply. So if you're gonna give a baby a bottle, make sure you pump at the same time. It's easier to build the supply in the beginning, have an oversupply, pump some extra in your freezer, and then start to regulate it. You don't have to pump as much. You don't have to nurse as much because once you have a freezer stash, you don't really need to keep producing unless you wanna donate it. So build your supply in the beginning, build your stash in the beginning, and then once baby is a couple months old, then you can start to really regulate your supply with actually what you need to feed your baby. I hope that makes sense. It's really just a supply and demand thing, and in the beginning, you're telling your body what you need your supply to be, and so that's how you're really gonna build your supply. It's easier to start in the beginning. Another thing that's really exhausting but really crucial to building your supply in the beginning is to pump at night. So when baby wakes up to eat at night, once you feed the baby, come out and pump or even pump in your bedroom. I have the Spectra S2 pump and it's really quiet so I could pump in the bedroom if I wanted to but I usually just come out in the living room and pump because I have to put the milk in a freezer bag anyway and I would have to come out here anyway. So pump at night after every single feed i know it's going to be exhausting in the beginning but if you really want to build your supply it's so worth it another really big tip is to get enough sleep now i know it's kind of like a catch-22 because i'm saying pump at night but get sleep i know it's hard but try to sleep when you can because you really want to make sure that you're well rested you're not stressed you're not fatigued because that's also going to help your supply you just want to make sure that you try to make it as stress-free and as easy as possible. Don't stress about producing enough milk. Don't stress about your supply. Don't stress that you don't have a freezer stash. It'll all come naturally. Just don't stress about it because that's ultimately going to hurt your supply as well. A huge tip I have is to drink a ton of water. I don't know what it is, but I feel like when I drink water, my body automatically makes it into milk. I'm just incredibly engorged every time I drink a lot of water so I just have the water bottle that I got from the hospital it's 32 ounces and I try to drink at least two or three of those I mean at least I mean some days I'm drinking like four of them but I try to drink at least my body weight in water that's a really great way to stay hydrated it's gonna produce milk and ultimately it's just really really good for you you're also gonna want to eat carbs and Oatmeal is really great for milk. In the beginning, when I was really trying to build my supply, I was eating oatmeal every single morning. I'm not even kidding. Every single morning I was eating oatmeal and pumping and I just was so exhausted. I felt like I was in such a routine of just pumping, feeding, changing diapers, eating oatmeal, drinking water. But really, it's super crucial if you want to build that extra freezer stash. Something that I personally do is I use an essential oil roller bottle that I just made myself. It looks like this. And it just has fractionated coconut oil with fennel, which is amazing for producing milk, basil and clary sage in it. I roll this onto my breasts every single day. I did it twice a day in the beginning and it really helps to produce milk. And um, I just got this roller bottle off of Etsy and then I actually made the label myself. I will put my shop down below if you guys are interested in getting some of these labels for your roller bottles and then I'll also have a link down to where I get my oils from. Like I said, I use the Spectra S2 pump. These are the pump bottles and the little flanges I think is what they're called don't quote me on that I don't know what they're actually called but they come in two sizes there's a 28 millimeter and then there's a 24 millimeter 
and I think the difference is in the size of this opening right here and I think I'm using the bigger one and the reason that they come in two different sizes is because your nipples will become different sizes they're gonna grow when you pump and you don't want your nipple to touch around here so I had to size up because apparently I have huge nipples sorry TMI I don't know I just I've nursed two kids they go back down in size when you're done nursing I promise but I noticed that my nipples were starting to touch the outside of the other ones and so yeah I just use this size I think that it works just fine so yeah these are what these look like and you just want to make sure that these are on your nipples properly because just with baby's latch you want to make sure that your nipple is getting the proper uh, stimulation so the biggest tip that I have for you guys is to make sure that you are feeling a letdown. And I know that some people don't feel their letdown. I feel mine. It feels like pins and needles like going through my breasts. Um, basically what the letdown is, is when baby starts sucking, they're going to tell your body that it's ready to like let the milk down. Basically, hence letdown. And so baby's gonna suck for probably 10 seconds and then your milk is gonna flow down and that's how baby is gonna start getting their milk. This is how my supply with Weston actually dropped for um, a significant amount of time is because I didn't realize that I wasn't getting the letdown. He was sucking, he was just really fussy at the breast because he wasn't getting any milk because my breasts weren't letting down any milk. They were super full but I wasn't getting a letdown. So basically Weston would get super fussy and I didn't know what to do so I would just give him the pumped milk and then I was not letting any milk down so my body wasn't producing any more milk so it actually ended up hurting my supply. Then once I realized that I needed to feel the letdown or I needed to make sure that I was getting a letdown, that's when I kind of had to start experimenting with different ways to try to get one. So if you need to pump to get the letdown and then put your bo your baby on the breast, that's one way to do it. The Spectre S2 actually has a button that um, mimics the baby's sucking in the beginning. And so that will cause your letdown. Another thing that you can do is have your significant other suck on your breast. I know that's kind of weird. Um, I had to do it. You just got to do what you got to do, right? Um... <laughs> And that's another way. Sometimes babies, they get impatient and they don't want to wait for the letdown if it's taking a while. So just keep in mind that you need to get a letdown because that is ultimately going to empty your breasts for your breasts to make more milk. Some people don't feel their letdown. I always feel mine. It literally feels like pins and needles in my breasts, like I said. Um, some people don't feel it, but if you can hear your baby sucking and like drinking and swallowing the milk then just know that you've had a letdown. Also, just make sure that when you feel your breasts, if in the beginning they were kind of full, and then once baby's done, they're kind of empty, that's how you know that baby got the milk out. You just wanna make sure that your breasts are being emptied. Same with when you pump. You wanna make sure that you're pumping every single drop of milk out of your breasts because that's gonna tell them to make more. I hope you guys are kind of catching on to what I'm saying. Basically, it's just a supply and demand thing. You want to make sure that you pump as much as possible, especially in the first month. First month, pump and feed every two hours. And then in the second month, I still pump and I nurse him, but I've kind of stretched it out to three hours now. Um, he's going three hours in between each feeding now. And so I still pump after every feed but now it's not every two hours, it's every three hours. And eventually I will stop pumping after the feeds once I feel like I have a good enough stash and my supply is really, you know, staying strong. And then I will just basically stop pumping extra and I will just let my body make what baby needs to eat. If you guys have any questions for me, let me know down in the comments. I will try to reply to all of them. I do my best to reply to my comments. If you guys liked this video and you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps my channel. 
Also, if you're not subscribed, make sure that you subscribe so you're notified every single time I upload a new video. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!